Okay. We are now presenting and uh, President Jones, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you. I want to call. Good evening, first of all. Welcome to our uh, today being Tuesday, April 21st, our regular meeting of the South Eagle Lindhurst Board of Education. Um, this is our first video meeting. So congratulations and welcome aboard. <laughs> we want to call to order tonight's meeting. May we get a roll call, Mr. Hill? Mr. Bloomberg? Present. Ms. Falkenberg? Here. Mrs. Jones? Here. Ms. Lee Harris? Here. Mrs. Ryan? Here. Can we go right into our Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, 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 one nation, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice. And justice. Oh. Perfect. Um, we'll go right into item 2.1. Well, first, I will. I guess we'll first say that we are doing this via video. There is a viewing opportunity for the public. There has been notifications issued that public comment will be taken by way of submitting via email. If we have any, as we get to that portion in the meeting, we will acknowledge them. Mr. Hill should be in possession of them if there are any. Um, we will not have any of the public dialoguing directly with us, but it will continue to go via that email submission. I believe that website has indicated all of the re re requirements and the manner in which they can submit it. And that list is on the website as well. I did go in and see that this morning. So we do have an opportunity for people to still partake. Um, you can go ahead and go into item 2.1 if we have any liaison reports. This is Neil. Um, I do not have a liaison report. All the information that I have checked on that's available for report just focuses on uh, what the state legislation as well as the State Board of Education has been doing focused on uh, COVID-19. There's nothing uh, really special to report um, for this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Bloomberg. Ms. Falkenberg, do we have a liaison report? Yes. Um, I was thinking, uh, as tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and our, kid, our students are all um, in their separate homes, I've been reading and thinking about all the children that are doing things to make a difference in the world. Um, one of the articles that I read was... Um, uh, it's for teachers, really, but um, talked about teaching students through project-based learning, and she gave some examples. She was a teacher um, in uh, somewhere down south uh, of Ohio, I can't remember, um, but she talked about um, some of her students, when they were going to hire a librarian, she um, asked her students to write letters to what they would like to, the questions they would like to ask for this librarian, what they would be uh, looking for, what kind of, um, of um, resources that they would like to see. Um, and then she uh, Dr. Cook about um, Greta Turnberg and her work for, um, the environment of um, dealing with the um, world crisis of, um, of um, global warming, sorry. And then another article that I looked at is from Mommy, the Mommy Eight-Way Middle School. Um, some of the sorry, am I coming back? Um, anyway, some of the seventh, seventh grade students um, were interested 
after winter break, they heard about all the fires in Australia and they wanted to do something to help the animals. And so they asked, um, did some research, found out that uh, there were several uh, uh, um, marsupials who need their parents to kill when they needed to have um, some pouches made. So they started to make pouches um, for these animals. And then lastly, um, and this is dealing from the um, Cincinnati, uh, the State House event, a school in Cincinnati, um, and some other schools, including Kenston, sent teams of their students to try and, try and um, persuade or encourage um, our state legislatures that it is important that we save public school. We talked about some of the wonderful things that they had going on in their public schools. So just three different ways that students have stepped up and shown real leadership and uh, shown that they're ready to move on in, um, in society. Okay, Catherine, thank you for that report. Um, I just I don't know if there's a lot of feedback there. Where is your mic located, Catherine? Is it on your screen? Mine the... On my yeah, on my computer. Okay. That's why when you turn your head, it goes down. Okay. Oh, it does? Could I move down? No, you can come closer. Yeah, you want to probably come a little closer. There you go. Yeah. Well, closer or back? Closer. Okay, I'm really sorry. No, that's perfect. It's just somebody else is watching from the outside and they told they okay. said that the feedback is there and they really couldn't hear when you turn away. So I just want to make sure where your mic was. That's okay. Um, we can go into item two point two, superintendent's report. What what good evening? This is Linda Reed, superintendent of South Euclid Leonard Schools. Um, as part of my report this evening, first of all, just want to say a big thank you. Uh, to the uh, South Euclid Leonard communities. Uh, this has been an unprecedented time for our school district and we are getting a tremendous amount of report uh, support. Our, um, a shout out to all of our teachers and our staff. Uh, they are working really hard. Um, just to give you an example, you know, some of our folks have, and it's a performance base, usually you could hear someone play something or sing something, you can give them immediate feedback. And now you're, you know, you're listening to a tape and you're writing and you're typing things up and, and some of those things take a little bit longer. Uh, so there's a lot of wonderful things. I started to lift everything that people were doing. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave some folks out and that wouldn't be fair. So uh, what we thought we'd do is um, you can go on our website and YouTube and, and different things. We have a lot of lessons out there, but I'm going to, um, you know, turn this over to Jen Moles because I thought this was really neat. People wonder, well, we don't know how high school kids learn and everything, but really what's happening with some of our youngest kids. And uh, Ms. Mohan uh, has been producing 30 minute videos a day for her preschool um, students. And I thought it was really a nice visual just to see um, on that and how some of our kids are learning. So in order to be able to do this, I actually have to um, stop sharing what I, uh, the agenda, and then Jen Mose is going to come on and she's going to share it. So stay tuned and I'm going to make this as part of my uh, report. But before I do that, I also want, you know, that we're having folks doing home visits to families. We have uh, people services uh, department uh, has been doing a really great job with that as well. And uh, we'll continue to give updates, just too much to include in a report uh, of this thing. So I'm going to stop sharing what uh, the agenda and Jen Moles is going to share a video as part of our report. Linda, do me a favor and turn your volume down maybe a little. There is an echo okay. on your voice. Okay. Talk for me. How's this testing? Is that better? It's pretty low. That's better. Okay. All right, Ms. Moles. Okay, hold on. I need to mute the presentation. Linda, can you go to the little drop down screen and unmute the presentation piece of it? Okay, let me go here. Do you see where it says presentation and then it's muted? I can do that. Wow. 
Wow. I'm trying to. <laughs> hey, let me see if I can do it. Maybe it'll let me, since I'm presenting. It won't let me unmute it. Okay, so it's going to be without noise, but it's really cute because it is a great song. But anyhow, here is a video of preschool. Hey, Jen, it does say that, that the presenter has to unmute it. So I don't know if you can try one more time. Did she freeze? Yep, you good. Were you able to hear it? No. No. Okay. Anyhow, it was a really cute thing. So Miss Mohan in her preschool class, um, she's meeting with them four days a week for 30 minutes a day. And that was just one of the little activities. That's our younger group. So the parents obviously have to do quite a bit to facilitate the access of technology. The one little girl was in the car while it happened. But um, she's pretty much had at least 90% participation every day. So I think it kind of highlights some of the really creative things that we're doing. And we will try to send that to you another way, okay? Yeah, I can send it via email. I'll share it. When we do that, that'd be great. It's really cute. It's very cute. All right, so I'm gonna go back to our board agenda. And let me get it back on. And, and we are going to get to um, public comment or then the minutes. Uh, Ms. Jones, you're back on. All right, item 2.3 public comment. Mr. Hill, do we have any? Uh, we have not received any. Okay. We have not received any public comment. I did inform the board that if it does come in, we're not monitoring that email during the meeting. So if it does come in, we will address it at the next meeting. Is that appropriate? I, I have my email pulled up and it directs them to send it to me. So if I get one, um, we can always do it at some point. But yeah. Okay. At some point, we'll just push it to the next meeting if we do have comment. Perfect. Um, item 3.1, the minutes for March 10th, regular meeting, and April 14th, 2020, the special meeting. We do ask that those minutes be approved as um, recorded or corrected. Do we have a motion to approve item 3.1? So moved. Second. Is that Stephanie and Neil? I think it was uh, right. Catherine. Yeah, it was Catherine and I Neil. Think maybe we'll do this. If you say your motion, say your name first for me. Okay. Yeah, so it was Catherine. Okay. Neil second. Any questions or comments? May we get a roll call? Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Miss Lee Harris? Aye. This is Ryan. Aye. Item four, treasurer's report. We can go into 4.1 financial reports, Mr. Hill. Uh, recommend for approval, uh, item 4.1 financial reports for month end March, 2020. 4.2, the bank reconciliation reports for March, 2020. Item 4.3, the investment earnings reports for month end March, 2020. Item 4.4 is the Bureau of Workers' Comp group, ret group retrospective program renewal for 2021. And item 4.5, uh, we have a couple of donations for approval. I recommend for approval items 4.1 through 4.5. May we get a motion to approve items 4.1 through 4.5? So moved, Aaron. Second, Stephanie. Any questions or comments? May we get a roll call? Miss Lee Harris. Aye. Mrs. Ryan. Aye. Mr. Bloomberg. Aye. Miss Falkenberg. Aye. Mrs. Jones. Aye. 
item five, starting with 5.1 of the superintendent's items. Well, good evening. Um, recommend to the Board of Education to approve item 5.1, a resolution retention of students a third grade reading guarantee. Um, because of COVID-19 and the recent passage of House Bill 197, uh, it is authorizing school districts and, and superintendents to be able to um, waive this, uh, the third grade guarantee, because uh, we are not testing this year. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with it, it identifies uh, students in kindergarten through grade three that are not on reading uh, level, and then there's reading improvement plans, and, uh, and uh, the state sets a promotion score. Well, of course, everything has changed, so um, House Bill 197 is permitting uh, school districts of, of flexibility. Uh, what also want to note that the local decision of, of parent, um, teacher, and principal, uh, that's, that local uh, control and decision is still there if they really feel uh, that uh, their child uh, is not ready for promotion. But this, this specifically is uh, with regards to uh, the third grade uh, guarantee. Um, so the second uh, resolution is distance learning. Um, as you know, uh, with the governor's orders of March uh, 12th uh, at a uh, state put at home, uh, we have been doing, along with other school districts in Ohio, remote learning from home. Although not required um, to have a, a, uh, um, a formal resolution, uh, it's important to memorialize all the work that we're doing to be able to know how these children are, are learning in South Carolina schools, uh, really um, memorialize the work that the teachers are putting in as well as um, as well as our students. So just a couple of areas that I want to um, highlight. Uh, it's a working document. And what I mean by that, you know, um, we learn something new every day and some information comes out to us on a weekly basis from the state. Uh, that means that we have our plans have to be flexible and we have to uh, ensure that we can adapt as we get new information. So really our distance learning plan, plan our remote learning plan uh, encompasses, it's really a framework for ongoing learning in South Yield Lindhurst. It includes teacher and student expectations, uh, communications, instructional framework uh, and guidelines, student participation, special education and social emotional uh, support. So again, um, recommend to Board of Education that we adopt a, a formal plan uh, with the mindset that it is a working document to be able to adapt to the needs of our students, our families, uh, and our staff as well. And then 5.3, approval of the resolution items as presented. May we get a motion to approve items 5.1 through 5.3? Superintendent So Collins. moved, Neil. Second, Stephanie. Any questions or comments? Yes, uh, Catherine, I had a few. Um, the, I, I have some questions regarding the um, pass fail for last the uh, final quarter of the school year. Um, that what does that do to students' GPA? In particular, well, yeah, in, in general, to students' GPA. So, so, Dr. Motley, I'm going to let you turn your screen back on because we have not uh, actually finalized anything apart that uh, of that part of the, the plan. So, Dr. Motley, I'm going to let you uh, update Ms. Falkenberg on that. She having trouble unmuting her phone, maybe? Oh, sorry. I'm just talking away. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Uh, and Ms. Falkenberg, what we are working on currently um, is a gradation system tied to pass-fail. One of the things we're concerned about is GPA, specifically for students in grades 7 through 12, because we do have some 7th and 8th graders who are actually taking classes for high school credit. Keeping that in mind, what we want to do is have a collection of grades and articulate what would um, 
what would note a pass, for example, pass advanced, past accelerated, past proficient, past basic, and et cetera. And those will be interpreted into letter grades or GPA. Now, I will say that is our brainchild within the district. I have a uh, first ring meeting tomorrow all the first ring curriculum directors because we kind of want to be on the same page as we are in many things, specifically because we want to hold harmless students who um, are watching the GPA piece right now. Um, we're also collaborating with the Board of Regents in regards to colleges because they know they too are having the press pods on what it means for GPA, not only for current seniors, but for juniors or sophomores who are in the pipeline who will be going to universities in the next couple of years. So we are definitely working with staff to make sure we come up with something that will hold students um, harmless in this um, unprecedented time. And more importantly, we recently entertained the idea of pass, fail, or incomplete because we have some students, quite frankly, um, not due to their own choice or their decision making, they are in situations in their home that they are not able to access curriculum like some other students are able to do. And the one thing we don't want to do is have the dynamics of their home situation impact their letter grade. So it's similar to what the uh, governor said yesterday, making sure we approach this with flexibility and sensitivity and that we don't over penalize students, but also keeping in mind that we have an accurate accounting of their academic performance. Okay, I mean, I certainly would not want to penalize students who don't have access um, to technology that they need, but I have talked to some teachers who have you know made phone calls some who've actually dropped off materials to students yeah, yeah they, they have they're not getting replies from those students and you know the concern is that the kids who really worked hard to um achieve and to to go sometimes even beyond are going to in a sense be penalized in comparison to the kids that have just slid by. Um, so that's, you know, that, that is certainly a concern. And that's legitimate. That is definitely a legitimate concern. And that's why when we are looking at the gradation of pass fail, if a child has passed, for example, with a P with accelerated, they've turned in all their assignments. Um, they've worked to the best of their ability to demonstrate a, a decent understanding of the material. They deserve more than just a P on the report card. It needs right. to be something different. So if it's a P plus or a P advanced, P accelerated, that would transfer into a letter grade potentially. Those are the things we are exploring because the other piece is it's going to have to match with what college will accept. Right. We need to be cognizant of what the Board of Regents will tell us as they oversee universities and colleges because they're struggling. Ironically, we've met with some of them in virtual meetings. They too are struggling because their kiddos are out right. and you have seniors that are in college and what does that mean? So I'm hoping we'll continue to work together so we come up with a fair plan, um, especially now that it was just announced that we are out for the rest of the year. I think that gives us some time to work together with all folks um, and get some recommendations from ODE as well as the folks we work with for our children. So I can tell you, you can be rest assured that um, nothing has been finalized yet. We have told our teachers to grade normally and to give feedback to our students as we would in a normal situation. And we will determine what that final quarter grade looks like at the end. Okay. My, my, again, I just want to, <laughs> having known students in class, um, yep. my concern is that when they see that or hear it's going to be past fail, they'll say, hey, I'm done. You know, if I could interject real quick, um, that's exactly where a lot of school districts uh, is really are taking their time with regards to the right um, thing here. That's why really no decisions. And I think Dr. Motley is telling uh, teachers we are grading your work as is and we expect the highest of quality of work from our students so we are certainly 
um, uh, many of the school districts are not jumping on what it is because this is a new a new territory for a lot of folks, and we want to ensure that they're given quality work and, and that's what they earn. And, and I will say I want to give kudos to Superintendent Reed in that regard because she said early on, if we tell the students that it's pass-fail, it'll undermine the accountability. Oh, we don't want students undermining the accountability like it's a golden parachute. So right now we are holding them to task. You know, I, I, I will also say, this is Cassandra, I will also say after having conversation with a couple other board members and I tried to broaden my horizon as I had the conversation with them, um, I spoke to some that are on a scale where they have a high poverty rate and the regular performance is low versus the other end of the scale where you're dealing with a lot of um, more productive students. And when I talk to the ones on the lower end, which to me, that pass fail option is really crucial. They had a whole dynamic of like, if the child performed like 40% or more, Correct then they would get a pass. If they did less, then they would get a fail. Um, they also indicated that um, colleges are aware of this situation and that um, they have notes in like the transcripts for the seniors that are coming over to where they are cognizant that these grades that they have are pass fail. And the one thing the other district did interestingly to me was like, they didn't add the past fails in the GPA. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit of assistance. So I kind of see where Kath, where you feel, Catherine, like those who achieved really hard these last eight weeks are kind of jilted a little bit on what they do. But on the back end, they also aren't penalized as far as GPA, either side of the scale. So I thought that was very um, interesting when I spoke a couple other school districts and then just speaking from experience my college kid is home and um their pass fail option on a collegiate level was they have a deadline on when to elect which classes they want to choose to get the pass fail and um my, my kid strategically was like i'm probably gonna have a d minus in this class so i'm gonna take the pass fail option because it won't tank his GPA. So this kid is going to walk away with about a three, six or three, seven, because he elected to do a pass fail on two classes. Yeah. So I don't know how much we as a public K-12 can align ourselves with that as far as does it have to be an all or nothing with the students or can they pick and choose which classes they can elect the pass fail on? Well, and I think the biggest the biggest focus will be to make sure that those children who are really striving and working hard, that it is indicated on their report card that they put forth the maximum effort. In some instances, for example, at K-6, we're exploring um, really at K-3, but in speaking with K-6, an incomplete option. Mm -hmm. And the other end of the continuum, Ms. Falkenberg, but... As I look at the district, it's like, is it really fair to give a kindergartner a fail when we know they are subject to whatever their parent decides for them to do right. at a time that they are told to do it? So we are also looking at an option to indicate incomplete because to a certain degree, the school year is incomplete and that right. holds the child harmless as well. So nothing has been firm. We have told our teachers to grade as normal, to get as much feedback as possible to help students understand content. But I, I imagine by our next board meeting, we will have something that we can share that's finalized in the direction we're going. Because I also think it's important to have teacher voice. This is uh, Stephanie. I just wanted to add one other thing like, uh, to Cassandra's point about what some of the colleges are doing, because um, a lot of them are doing the pass fail. Also, one of uh, Jack goes to OSU and some of his professors are taking their last grade and so whatever they had at the last you know quarter or semester or whatever yeah, they, can, they can they can't get worse than that grade but they can Correct. improve their grade so they still have like you know there's incentive there so there's a lot of different things out yeah. there to look at and I, think, and I think that's the concern there's so many options out there we want to make sure we get it right to meet the needs of our students hence I really look forward to the conversation tomorrow 
um, because of course we trade kids with a lot of first train districts and they end up coming back. So we may not be perfectly aligned to other districts, but we definitely want to look out for the best interest of our own. Is there any way that we can table this then, uh, this vote? Um, this, this doesn't, this doesn't really, Catherine, this doesn't really, it, it's, it's, there's nothing in the plan. Remember I said it was a working document. There's right. nothing in the plan that, that um, we, we need to memorialize that we have a plan. So it's important that we move, we, we approve this. There's uh, definitely, that's what you, you'll even see in the plan says it's a working document, which means that we have to keep revisiting things. And, and you know, the grading thing is something we want to take our time with. So the recommendation is this is the first board meeting we're able to do that. We want to ensure that the South Carolina schools does have a remote learning plan that is a work in progress as most school districts are doing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, may we get a motion to approve? Was that items? Was, was that 5.3? 5 5 motion was already made. Yeah, motion and second was already made. We just need a vote. Can we get a roll call, Mr. Hill? Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Falkenberg? struggling with this one. Um, Ms. Falkenberg? I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I guess I will vote I um, uh, with reservations, I must say. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Ms. Lears? Aye. Item six, superintendent's items. Under 6.1, uh, superintendent's, um, sir, I'm sorry, uh, for certified staff, uh, recommending to the Board of Education to approve the following personnel items for certified uh, staff. Uh, we have a, a paid leave of absence. And also, as I mentioned last week uh, with mixed emotions, um, but also very happy, uh, we have uh, Dr. Motley, who will um, be taking on her first superintendency uh, in uh, the fall. She'll start it uh, somewhere around August uh, for the Savannah City Schools out uh, west of Toledo area. So we uh, have certainly enjoyed uh, my eight years with her in South Eagle Lenhurst schools. And I believe she's been here for 12 years. And I'm gonna look to see if my, I'm sorry, but I probably get more feedback there. Um, so, uh, you know, we wish her well and um, uh, we uh, wish her, uh, thank her for everything that she's done. And we still have a few months left with her and uh, uh, get her resignation for this evening. Thank you. May we get a motion to approve item 6.1? So moved. So many yeah. other names, like Catherine? Catherine, yeah, sir. Second, Aaron. Any questions or comments? Dr. Motley, I do say congratulations to you. It's been um, a fun run. Um, we've learned a lot here under your tutelage. You've definitely learned a lot. Um, I will say over these last years, I've seen extreme growth in you. So in one breath, I'm excited for your next picture that you're painting but in the same breath I am going to miss you around here but you're no better than the people that you groom bloom and allow to grow so I do wish you well wherever you end up after that tenure and um we're here uh, thank you I appreciate that that means a lot it's been it's been a great ride in SEL and I've worked um at the pleasure of the school board and of superintendent Reed and I have grown and quite frankly, I would not have been able to accept the position or have the confidence to interview for the position if it wasn't for what you all have done to invest in me as a professional and as an individual. Um, we have shared a lot of ups and downs, but the good thing is we have a team, we have weathered the storm um, and we've done well. 
and we run above the storm a lot of times and we've become the look to district in so many things that we have accomplished and ventured down a road. So I um, am eternally grateful. I will miss my SEL family. And I use the term family because I've grown up here. Uh, <laughs> a lot of things I've grown up here. I've, I've just experienced a lot professionally and personally. And the good thing is I don't burn bridges and I don't jump around. I, all of my professional experiences have been for a good length of time. And truly, this is an opportunity, a door open. And I am a very spiritual person. God opened a door and a window and I walk through and he has never let me down. And um, I just want to say to the board and to Superintendent Reed and my colleagues, I appreciate all of you. And this isn't goodbye. It's just like, I'm going to see you around. We're still going to see each other. There's still Capitol Conference and all these great things. So thank you, as it was my pleasure to serve not only all of you, but the SEL community. Can I cry now or later? Do I shed my tears now? Or later? <laughs> you don't have to cry at all, girl. You don't have to cry at all. I just, I just need to know who I send my concerns to now. <laughs> You can still reach out, but I'll have to like loop it back around because I don't want to usurp anybody that replaces me. But <laughs> no, I will not do that. But if you ever have any general education questions, I don't want to decide anyone. Um, I'm giving up a chair for someone else. Dr. Motley, you've gone above and beyond and we greatly appreciate it. Even being the middle person for our PTAs and us as well, standing in the gap there, I greatly appreciate all you do. Um, and all that you have done. I was hilarious. Somebody said to me yesterday, they were like, remember when she had her foot on that cruise and she came back and had the cast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, then there was that. So even even then, you know, you were still making it happen and making it work for us. So I appreciate you greatly and best of luck to you in your new endeavor. I know you'll do amazing. You're very blessed to have received you. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let me switch back here. Hold on. Um, if you would help me along, did we take a vote on that yet? Or, or am I on to 7.1? Okay. May we get vote. a roll call, Mr. Hill? Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Under 7.1, uh, let me get here for a moment. I uh, recommend to the Board of Education approve the following personnel item for classified staff. We have an amended um, unpaid leave of absence and we have uh, hired a substitute bus driver and hopefully we'll get to roll those buses again someday soon. And that is it for uh, classified staff. May we get a motion to approve item 7.1? So moved. Catherine. Second, Stephanie. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, may we get a roll call? Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Item eight, starting with 8.1, superintendent's uh -huh. items. Okay, under 8.1, recommend to the Board of Education approve the following memorandum of, understa of understanding for the Memorial Jazz Ensemble. Um, you know, occasionally in between, you always have a, a collective bargaining agreement and occasionally uh, there are th new things that arise in between uh, the uh, expiration of a, a bargaining agreement. And uh, this is actually some work um, that uh, Mr. Shook was doing over at Memorial. And again, we're just, uh, coming to an agreement with uh, Salta on on uh, that position. And then the second one here, 8.2. Sorry, it's a little bit delayed. Again, memorializing the supplemental activity that Nathan Shook uh, took on at Memorial. Um, and um, it was probably a position that didn't, uh, well, what didn't exist, but, but emerged. And again, we uh, both parties agree that it's something that was good for our students at Memorial, and that's why we're asking for the board's approval this evening. May we get a motion to approve items 8.1 through 8.3? So moved, Stephanie. 
Second, Catherine, sorry. Any questions or comments? Yes. I do have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I just want to, for clarity's purpose, this is work that Mr. Shook has already been done like we've seen previously for supplementals, correct? That's correct. Okay. And then just to clear the air, um, although we are in the pandemic situation where school is not open, that still does not make any of supplementals be prorated. They're still paid because they were contractual MOUs, MOU supplementals, correct? No, that is that is un, that is currently under discussion on what um, position the um, the board and the um, union will take on that. That is nothing has been decided at this point okay. in time. Okay, so that's fine on that one. Any other questions? Yeah, this is Catherine. Is um, Memorial Jazz Ensemble the same as Jazz Band, or uh, are those two different? Did, is it just a different name? Uh, I, let me get back. I'm going in between screens. It's hard to talk to, to uh, just an agenda here, so I'm going back and forth. They okay. are two different. I mean, this is Memorial. This is for Jazz Ensemble Memorial. I think the other one you might be referring to is the Jazz Band that's okay. at the high school. No, there used to be, well, I mean, I don't know how many years ago, but my daughter was in the Memorial Jazz Band. So I just wondered, maybe that kind of died and it's coming back. I don't know. I hope. Um, Ms. Mr. Miller, do you want to hop in on that piece? Because I'm not... Um, yeah. Yeah. It's my understanding that's exactly what this is. It's sort of a, I don't know if it, it was just a simple name change. Okay. years or it evolved into something different, but I think that's my understanding is that's what this used to be. Okay, thank you. Let me go back. Okay. Hearing no more questions or comments, may we get a roll call? Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Ms. Lee Harris? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hunter, 9.1 uh, business items recommend to the Board of Education to approve and uh, consider renewal of the EDS software license. I believe that was with the um, Treasurer's Office. Um, 9.2, a revision of the uh, facility use handbook. 9.3, a before and after school care uh, program right at school for the 2021 school year. Um, this is something that um, the school district has been looking at for some time. It is more, it's a, uh, an outstanding enrichment program that provides more than childcare. It's an extended learning opportunity. And um, we are really looking forward to working with Right at School. You will hear more about that. I know we've presented to the board before on this um, program. And uh, we're really excited to get started to uh, um, help our families once school reopens. And then 9.4, um, approval of the superintendent's business items as presented. May we get a motion to approve items 9.1 through 9.4? So moved, Erin. Second. Second. Oh, Stephanie. Any questions or comments? May we get a roll call? Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Under 10.0 uh, teaching and learning, let's go to the first one, 10.1. Uh, Recommend to the approval of uh, the student fee schedule for the 2021 uh, school year. Scroll down a little bit here. 10.2, um, uh, the overnight extended field trip for the brush band camp. Um, and I believe there is a, I think it's a change. It used to go uh, to Edinburgh, but I believe they're going somewhere a little closer, Teal College in Pennsylvania. And 10.3, uh, the College Credit Plus agreement with um, Cuyahoga Community College. And then 10.4, the approval of the superintendent's teaching and learning items as presented. May we get a motion to approve items 10.1 through 10.4? So 
So moved. So, oh. Second, Stephanie. I'd like to separate the um, 10.3 from the rest of the motion. So, hold on. The, the motion was made by Catherine, right? Correct. And then second by Stephanie? Yes. And then Neil with his um, description of reservation. No, nope, I'm not reservation. I would like to separate 10.3 right. from the rest of the motion so right. that it can then be voted on its own. Right, your reservation of separating 10.3. Okay. That college credit plus for you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, any questions or comments? I do have a question. Um, a, couple, a couple things on the Brush Band Camp trip. If you open up the proposal, I don't know if it's an issue, but I'm going to say it because they have it listed somewhere in one of those papers. It said Teal University, but it's actually Teal College. I don't know if we need to correct the minutes that are here. I mean, the, the schedule that is here. I'll make yeah, note and correct them. Okay. I did open up the attachments. It seems as if the proposal is correct. Yeah, I think it's just the agenda that has university. Okay. And then the other question, additional question I have, um, I don't know if this was made public or not, but would it be worthy of holding back on this ban um, item considering it has Mr. Shook listed on there as a um, chap a under a part of supervision? Are you guys aware that he told the kids today that he was not coming back next year? No. Say this again. I didn't hear you. So Mr. Shook notified the kids today that he would not be back next year. He sent out messages to the families and the students on Remind. He said he was trying to decide what, when was the right time and he wanted to do it now. He was sad to do it through email, but he's moving. So um, a, a few things. Um you know, we, we, we'll never miss a beat, you know, whether Mr. Shook will be here or not. We, we do wish him well. And we thank him for the time that he's spent in South Oak Linear Schools. Um, the, I guess my question to Dr. Motley is, um, would it make a difference if we held off until May? I mean, I'll be honest with you, even if we did it now or in May, I think a lot of this is contingent on what the governor says with regards to, uh, you know, travel and everything. So it may change anyways. And I don't know, maybe Dr. Martin, you had a little bit more insight on why maybe um, maybe Mr. Champ wanted to prove it sooner than later. And if not, um, you know, if you could add anything to that. Certainly, I think he was hopeful that we would be back in school before the end of May. Mr. Champ is a very half glass full type person. And I think he was hopeful that not only would our students be back in school, but this would be an opportunity. So he didn't want the paperwork. Um, disrupt the ability of the children to go. I'm very comfortable with pulling it at this time and that this was posted last week to our agenda. And with the um, announcement being made yesterday, we can definitely circle back with him and let him know that we pulled it due to the new rollout or announcement from Governor DeWine. Okay. Oh, I no, have a question. Since they're in Pennsylvania, then, I mean, is there a possibility too that, I mean, DeWine might say, yes, we can travel and Pennsylvania might say, no, there's no traveling. So there's really a lot of uh, things up in the air. There are a lot of questions up in the air. I'm sure many of you heard the news today that many states are relaxing certain regulations. Some states are, some states aren't. I think we want to look out what's in the best interest of our students and make a more informed decision later. Um, but again, in that we posted this last week, I think it's, it's crucial that we pull it off and I'll have a conversation with Mr. Champ and let him know why. Um, and as we prepare to move forward, look at what that can look like, because at this point, I don't see it taking place. Do I, I don't agree with taking it off the agenda um, for a variety of reasons. And 
Mr. Shook announcing he's not going to be there, in my personal opinion, is irrelevant because he's an employee of the district. And as the paperwork is currently written, it has got the employees of the district that are working with the band listed. And if he's no longer with the district, then it's irrelevant that his name is or isn't on it. Someone who else they hire would be. As far as the travel, as far as... Um, what's going to come out by governors we don't know and i commend mr champ in um being ahead of the game and putting in information making the request that is expected of him and doing it um in advance not last minute like so many of the others have been done and um i am sure mr champ fully understands that the moving forward with this trip is going to have a lot to do with um, the situation and what is um, put out there by our um, state government. So I see no reason for holding up on this um, because it's not going to change what ultimately will end up happening. Um, so under as, circumstances. As, as, as a recommendation from the, the superintendent, um, you know, it is in your, um, I, I would have to say it wouldn't hurt to have, keep it on here. I mean, basically, you know, it's any, anything that we plan. Um, Mr. Shook a few years ago, I think was a late hire and he took the place of somebody else that left and, and Mr. Bloomberg is correct. Um, you know, it, it's any employee. It doesn't matter, you know, matter who it is. And again, we met in that piece. So it can't hurt to leave it on there. Um, and I guess maybe it could be a little bit of wishful thinking that life may get back to normal, our kids be able to go back to band camp. And so um, we can pull it at any time if something changes. Obviously, if we get a new order out in June or and anything else that happens, uh, we'll just have to make sure we stay in open lines of communication with Mr. Champ and the band parents and, and really keep them up to speed. It's not etched in stone. We're just saying at this point in time, we support this. And then if it changes, we, we can change and note why the change might have had to take place. So, you know, it's, I, I don't want you to feel anxious about, you know, you know, having it on there. Yeah. My, my concern wasn't about whether or not the governor's order was going to change. My question was legalities and for insurance purposes with Mr. Should being there. I didn't know how difficult it is gotcha. to switch someone out when it is already being reserved as that person, whereas they're listed as a, a, a soup, a chaperone, and listed on the liability. That was my concern. Gotcha. If I may share, if indeed um, we hire a replacement, Mr. Sham, what we would do is actually bring the trip back to board for approval again. Um, to the point of information regarding chaperones, and we've okay. done, we've lost folks in the summer, or we've added chaperones to a, an extended trip. We will always bring it back to the board for approval of those individuals serving as chaperones. Okay, that was my question. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yep, good question. All right. Uh, okay, Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, may we have a roll call? Are we doing two separate votes then? 10 1, 10 2, and then 10 3 separate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so for 10 1 and 10 2, uh, Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Okay, and for 10 3, Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Big no. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Okay. All right, let's go to item 11. Yep, there are no people's service items this evening. Let me move on to 12.1, special education. Uh, recommending to the Board of Education to approve the one-year service agreement with the healthcare processing consulting company to assess SEL and managing the Ohio Medicaid uh, school program uh, for an annual fee of 18,000. And I believe that is the only um, item for special education uh, this evening. May we get a motion to approve item 12.1? So 
So moved, Aaron. Second. Second. Stephanie. Stephanie. Any questions or comments? Uh, this is Neil. I have just one quick question. Um, is this a um, consulting firm that we've used in the past? Ms. Mills, I believe it is one that we've used in the past. I knew we've used two of them. I'm not sure how long we have utilized this one. Um, we, yep, we had a three-year contract with them previous to this. Um, they were with us when we original when I originally started in the district, and um, then we went with the firm of Texas that closed. Ended up back with them, so this is actually our fourth contract with them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, may we get a roll call? Miss Lee Harris. Aye. Mrs. Ryan. Aye. Mr. Bloomberg. Aye. Ms. Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Item 13, Board of Education. Is there any information that we have to provide? Um, I do. I know there have been, um, just by way of Board of Education information, a lot of PTAs have, a couple PTAs have done Zoom meetings to try to keep their balls rolling. Um, in the midst of the kids not being in school. I know they were trying to figure out how to give some accolades to teachers where typically they would have been in the building doing something like lunch. So they were doing some digital take photographs of the kid with cards saying something nice or special about a teacher. They were tabulating those. Um, want to thank again the People Services Department looking at those numbers of how many kids and the families have been eating is um, heartwarming. I think that is great. I was up there a couple days just checking out them, telling them how much I appreciate them. I almost wanted to walk one of them upside the head because they had no masks on, but they were social distancing. Um, they were keeping their distance, so it was good to see them out. And I just had to say thank you because they could have been at home with their own families at this time, but they chose to be there. Um, I know the seniors, I think Mr. Williamson sent out a, he's been doing regular messages for the high school. And I believe he sent out a senior email, just kind of touches, touching bases with them, seeing how they were feeling and giving them a little bit of information. So that was um, heartwarming. I think I've been seeing his videos on a weekly basis. I think he's um, a little bored too, and he misses his kids. He wants to be in the building. I can kind of hear it in his voice as he's addressing them. Um, quite a few kids and families have questions about prom and graduation. Um, have told them we really don't have an answer just yet. Um, so I guess they'll just kind of stay tuned. I'll hold my reservation on how I feel about that for a later date, but those questions are out there. Um, sadly, I was looking some of our neighboring districts have already penciled in prom and graduation. And ironically, I won't go into names, but one of them has stated that they're having graduation and prom in May. That is heart wrenching to me. Um, so when we get to that point, um, those are some real conversations that we're gonna have, have to have with the students and the families. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else we don't have anything going on in the building so there's nothing about this <laughs> this is neil um not for tonight but i would like to kind of get a sense of where the admin is looking um with prom whether or not there's going to be one where it might be when it might be and also graduation but i also have I think this is unfinished business and I can't remember if it just seems like it was something that was addressed a long time ago that was really something that was going to impact this year or it's something that was discussed a long time ago but it's only going to impact next year. And that was the whole thing about the ranking, um, salutatorian, um, that Victorian, um, and the reality that it was going to likely be two students that never actually walked into our building 
Um, and I know that it was a uh, hot and heavy conversation for a while and then it just disappeared. I believe it was, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Dr. Motley and Superintendent Reed, that was something that I thought we had decided that we knew that it would take uh, multiple years to get established. So I believe it did not affect this year, would not affect next year. And we were trying to determine the pinpoint of when we pull that trigger and start implementing those processes, right? But I thought that the it, it, the issue was coming, and I believe it was this graduating class, or maybe it's the year 21 class, that those students were coming. They were there already. Right. Um, that is this class. I believe okay. that's one. And I thought mm -hmm. that our answer was we were just going to relay, rely on our regular mm -hmm. rules that are in place it's right now right. because there's no way we could jump in and change that. So our salutatorian and valid Victorian are going to be two kids that nobody knows. We do, I don't believe we know right now. We haven't gotten an update and we're still dealing with this situation of closing out this semester. But go ahead, Dr. Uh, Superintendent. Yes, yeah, but isn't, isn't, that, isn't that based on seven semesters, not the full eight? So that would have already been determined. Right. And I think the last time we talked about it, Neil, we said that it wasn't right to do anything at this late, late, late date nor was there anything to change how we've always um, picked them. And because they're residents of the district and they, th those are the rules. And so we're just abiding by the rules and we were going to follow up. I believe in the, I thought we thought we kind of put it off to the summer to decide when we were going to, as Cassandra said, decide if we were going to make a change for the future or just um, leave things as is, knowing that because kids can take CCP, that there may be other students who um, end up being, you know, ranked at the top of the class that didn't take classes at Brush, but live in our district, are enrolled in our schools and are taking CCP. It's really, it's not anything we as a, we can do. We can't, we can't, not let those kids take CCP. That's a state mandate. We can't, you know, ding them because they are taking CCP. So, you know, the only thing we can do is decide if we're going to keep salutatorian and valedictorian or if we change That's to something right. else. And there's still That's a lot right. of conversation to be had around that. Okay. If I may, if I may also share, I believe um, the last time I spoke to Mr. Williamson and um, one of the students, I believe, who is scheduled to be valedictorian uh, is now taking a course, um, independent study, I do believe, at Brush. So that's one piece. The other piece is, I believe, we landed on, and you're correct, Stephanie, that uh, we did not change it this year. However, we were going to have a committee that was going to take place starting this spring and work things over the summer and into the fall that would be able to determine if we would go the cum laude route like so many other schools are doing. Um, so we're not going to change anything for the class of 2020 um, because I the last time we may have met and discussed this might have been January or February and we thought it would be kind of awkward um, just for reasons that you said, Stephanie. But I do know that we wanted to talk about it in a committee um, type format so we could have input from students, teachers, administrators, and parents uh, as we transition to a cum laude system. And I believe so what Lieutenant I, Reed shared that with Mr. Williamson, I do believe. I think what we need to do exactly because so much time has gone by, I'm going to ask Dr. Motley uh, to put together a report to see, you know, to outline where we left off because obviously there is going to be some future work that to be done and just, uh, you know, us trying to recall from memory, and I think we're, you know, the conversation is pretty accurate here, but I, I think it's best if we, something so important that we memorialize it in, a, in an update for the board. And I'll ask Dr. Motley uh, uh, to get that together. We'll report that um, out to you uh, at the, probably we could actually give a, a, an update and have in your hands or, or what, what it looks like before the next work session. And then this, you know, we could decide what next steps are and be able to uh, move that, I don't even want to say conversation along, move that initiative along and, and put some teeth to it. 
OK. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up, Neil. Uh, Any other unfinished yeah. business? Stephanie, no PTA stuff? No. Oh, quiet. <laughs> quiet. OK. <laughs> Um, closing items, Mr. Hill, do we have any public comment that has come through? We have not. Okay. Hearing none. I do believe we have a need for executive session this evening. Just that would for, be correct. Um, I'm sorry. What'd you say? For personnel. Yes. For personnel. Yes. Um, just for any spectators that we do have in the audience, um, we will have a need to close out this public session and go into an executive session. We um, are going in for personnel. There will be no other action being taken. And we do thank you for joining us this evening. And hopefully we'll see you when we come back. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, Mr. Um, Mr. Hill, I have not... Uh, Turn off the meeting yet? Do we need to record when we're going into executive session? Yeah, we're just going to executive session at 7 11. Uh, we do need a motion in a second. So we get a motion. So moved, Aaron. Second, Stephanie. And Stephanie. May we get a roll call? Uh, Ms. Lee Harris? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Bloomberg? Aye. Mrs. Falkenberg? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Okay. I am, uh, so how, how do we get back into, we use the same?